So our next speaker, uh, you may know by name, I certainly think you know his work. Uh, Dean Kamen is an inventor, an entrepreneur, and a tireless advocate for science and technology. Trust me, once you get this guy started, he won't stop. Um, his role as an inventor and advocate are deeply connected. His passion for technology, through technology, comes through. I have had the privilege of interviewing him over the years, and he's always uh, incredibly full of energy, and I'm looking uh, forward to talking to him now about his work around robotics, uh, technology for the disabled. Uh, as an inventor, he holds more than 440 US and foreign patents, many for these medical devices that have expanded the frontiers of healthcare, as well as tons of stuff around robots, the first wearable insulin pump for diabetics, a prosthetic arm for returning quality of life to injured soldiers, and you might remember the segue. In 2000, uh, Dean was awarded the National Medal of Technology by US President Bill Clinton uh, for his work. Um, and so, ladies and gentlemen, Dean Kamen. How are you? Um, so I'm starting out with the same question for everyone. Um, when you think of the term entrepreneur, what do you think? And you know, at what age, because uh, you're, you're a couple years older, I think, than our last speaker, at what age did you consider yourself an entrepreneur? He's 28. I started my first business when I was in high school. My older brother was in med school, and I started building those pumps that you talk about that later became adapted for uh, diabetes. Um, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life, mostly because I was pretty sure nobody would tolerate hiring me, and I wouldn't tolerate being told what to do, so I figured I had no alternative. Um, to me, I characterize uh, entrepreneurs, I think the most important characteristic you need to be a successful entrepreneur is you have to be schizophrenic. You have to get up every morning totally believing it's going to work, it's such an important idea, it's got to happen, everybody's going to see the vision here, and if you had any idea how long it's really going to take, how frustrating it's going to be, how many times you are going to fail, you wouldn't do it. Many people think they're going to be entrepreneurs, and the first time they have those failures, those frustrations, they go off to do something else. So, I mean, every entrepreneur I've ever seen succeed, you know, whether it's Larry or Sergey or, you know, you name it, from Gates, which is another older guy, or these, you know, Bezos, they all have something in common. They're unbelievably enthusiastic and passionate about what they do. And every one of them has made a great overnight success after 10 or 15 <laughs> years of struggling. And that's what it takes. And in fact, I would say to a lot of the students here, maybe a cautionary tone, the word entrepreneur, I think, has become a shorthand for something that's overly simplistic and not true. Oh, it's the way you run out and wake, make quick money by doing something that's straightforward, easy. And I kid you not, I've had a lot of students. You know, I've hired about 500 lot from MIT. This is good low-hanging fruit here. And I'm right up the road. And I got 500 engineers in Manchester, and I got 100 openings. Come on up. I just got $80 million from the Department of Defense, okay. matched by 300 uh, million <laughs> bucks to do, to do uh, regenerative medicine in a way it's never been done, and I need smart people. But I have kids come. and telling me they want to be an entrepreneur, and they show me a business plan. Mm -hmm. With always, it's a hockey stick. It's a waste of time. They, with great detail, they show me what they're going to do in five years. And you think, there's an infinite number of ways they'll be better than that. There's an infinite number of ways they'll be worse than that. The only thing I'm pretty sure is none of them will ever do that. It's not worth talking about. Secondly, they start out these days by saying, and here's my exit strategy. <laughs> I think they learned that across the street from the... Yeah, the business school. <laughs> but, but, but anyway, I say to all of them, you know what? You haven't even started life yet, and you're already defining your exit strategy. The only thing that tells me is you don't like what you're doing, and you want to get out of it. I got a better idea. Jump right to the conclusion. Don't go into it. Find something you'd like to you do can and exit go do it. Exit now. Spare yourself all the pain and suffering. But, but, but it's, uh, you can laugh at it, but the idea that people are now trying to come up with schemes and methods and plans to be an entrepreneur is silly. You find something you're passionate about, you jump into it, and you just be prepared to fall down over and over. But if you fall down seven times and you stand up eight, you're a winner. 
So I want to get to a lot of your other work, the stuff you're doing now in robotics, but I, I want to start with um, the thing that you're best known. First of all, how comfortable are you with the idea that no matter what else you do, no matter all these things, you've changed lives, that you have this wheelchair that climbs stairs, all these great things, you're going to be the Segway guy. Is that something you're okay with or are you going to challenge me on it? Well, it's a reality that that's the way media is. By the way, they've shipped over a million of those things. But even that, even the Segway, is uh, most of my life is medical stuff. Mm -hmm. You talked about prosthetics, home. We're right now about to introduce home hemodialysis. We're doing regenerative medicine. But we made this balancing device to help the paraplegic, disabled people missing both of their legs. And we said, a wheelchair is a pathetic alternative to be able to, not just mobility, but dignity. Look people in the eye, stand up. And we said, humans balance. Your mom remembers probably two things about you. Your first words and your first steps. It's uniquely human to, to stand up. And so we made this thing called an iBot to climb stairs. Once we realized that we'd done all the hard work to make a device that simulates human balance, multiple gyros, accelerometers, servos, we said, oh, to get the volume up, to get the cost down, because there fortunately aren't that many people that need iBots, since we did all the hard work of making it even climb stairs with its cluster, sure. just make a simple version of it that uses that same control system, those same gyros, accelerometers, and, oh, we'll call that one a segue. And so even the Segway came from one of our medical products, but, but you're right, I'm known as the Segway guy. You had a pretty grand vision of what it could be at its most. You, you know, the famous paper, cities will be redesigned, all this stuff. Um, you know, do you consider the Segway a success because you've sold a million, or a failure because it hasn't redefined cities, it's redefined mall cops? So, so, so first, first of all, I didn't sell a million. I licensed the stuff we do, right. like all the rest of it. Secondly, um, the Wright brothers flew in 1903. Ten years later, 1913, there were no commercial airlines. They weren't giving free, frequent flyer miles, and most people didn't believe. They'll, you know. I guess my answer to you is, I am still more than ever a believer that as we go from seven to eight to nine billion people on this planet, and they're all moving into more congested uh, pedestrian environments, the idea that a 3,000 pound vehicle to move your 150 pound butt around town is absurd, especially when you're in a dense environment. So I still believe that we need to apply better technologies to make personal mobility in the, the communities of the future more efficient, more environmentally friendly, more fun. And we've seen all sorts of uh, offshoots of things like a Segway. So do I believe the Segway will be the dominant way people get around other than walking? And just, I don't know. But do I believe we started a dialogue by which people are starting to realize cars in major cities are about as you? I mean, I, I still believe that a major city needs cars like a fish needs a bicycle. It's the wrong technology for that environment and for those users. And all you have to do is try to get around Boston. I think you'd be sympathetic to that fact. Um, what are, what are can, if you off the top of your head can think of a setback that you've had and how you got around it? Because again, to your point, I don't think entrepreneurship is about success. It's about navigating failures. We don't have enough time for me to talk <laughs> about the failures. Um, I think the one thing that I would love to talk about as an ongoing potential success, of course, is my first program, which started about 28 years ago, in which I convinced 27 or 28 companies to go adopt kids, particularly women and minorities uh, that never think about science and technology as being fun, cool, a, a possibility for a career. And it's grown. Most, most of you entrepreneurs would like growth like FIRST. 28 companies first year, about double the next year, about 100 to 30. Year. This year, we had 61,400 schools. We had, I have 3,700 corporate sponsors, every one of the Fortune 500. We're in 83 countries. We and have, this is a giant global robotics it's, competition. And it's, it's a celebration of science and technology that puts, puts technology in front of kids in that same passion, passionate way, effective way of getting their attention as sports and entertainment. We have a culture, and now the world's developed a culture that's obsessed with sports and entertainment. 
And somehow we've confused the fact that if it's fun and if instead of getting quizzes and tests, you get letters and trophies and instead of sitting in rows, you get to do creative things. We justify sports around the world by saying, well, they learn teamwork. Well, then why, when they do teamwork in a classroom, do we call it cheating? It, it, the, fact is, <laughs> the, the, the fact is, we said take everything that's so powerful about sports, bouncing a ball or otherwise, and let them use that to develop the muscle hanging between their ears. And by creating us, and it was an entrepreneurial idea at the time, it was Really, Dean, you're going, to make, you're going to make math and science and fit more exciting to kids than basketball? Yes, I am and I will, and we've done it. The trouble is, it needs to be in every school, it needs to be in every community worldwide. We just started a group to make it worldwide called First Global. Uh, we did our first demonstration of it in Washington, D.C. I rented, believe it or not, you can rent Constitution Hall. And he's got a price. I rented it last summer. I thought I'd get 30 countries to send teams. I had 157 countries send teams. This August 15th through August 18th, you're all invited. We're taking over the largest enclosed arena, Mexico City, on the 50th anniversary of the other Olympics. And we'll have probably 160 to 180 countries there proving that 60% of the teams that came to, with their country's flag to compete in uh, Washington, 60% of those teams were started by young women. A bunch of the teams were all girls teams, including an all girl, seven girls from Afghanistan, a war-torn country, came to that event. They're here, one of their, one of their stars is gonna be speaking here today. Uh, I, I believe that over the next few years, whether segways become a dominant method of transportation, or I should say small personal <laughs> electric vehicles that are efficient, whether that changes what the infrastructure of a city looks like, I don't know. But we will change this world to one in which all kids see that if you approach it properly, math and science and engineering and inventing and problem solving is every bit as much fun, every bit as exciting, and way more likely to lead to careers than bouncing a ball. The only difference between our sport and every other sport, every kid on our teams can turn pro. All right, well thank you so much. Dean Kamen, everyone. Thank you.